So in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about oil catch cans and positive crankcase ventilation. So um, first of all, let's talk about what positive crankcase ventilation is. Now, depending on whether you've got an old car or a relatively new car, the theory still applies. So basically, as your engine is running, there is a mount of, call it trapped gas, um, that creates positive pressure inside the crankcase. And you want to be able to vent that pressure. Now, in older engines, you've probably seen things like breathers, like I have here, you know, in the back on the valve cover. And that was totally fine, kind of back in the day. Um, you've probably seen videos where there's engines on the dyno being run real hard, and you see a lot of blow by, right? So what that is, is that is a generally a mixture of air, oil, potentially fuel, um, whatever else might be in your engine that is escaping out into the atmosphere. And people talk about poor ceiling rings, things of that nature. But um, one way or the other, you wanna be able to let your engine breathe. So back in the day, they used breathers. Now that worked. Um, however, there's a couple issues there, right? You could have um, oil escaping into your engine bay, getting you know oil film all over your engine. Um, obviously, you've got the issue of that leaking into the atmosphere, which is not good for the environment. So moving forward, you will see uh, less and less breather setups like on this big block Chevy, and you'll start to see sealed valve covers, okay? So, you know, fully sealed valve covers, you still need ventilation, um, but where does it go? So let me show you how it's set up on this 97 Cobra. And the theory kind of still applies for slightly newer vehicles that might be direct injection. And we'll talk about that really briefly here. In a so here on this four valve motor, um, you've got obviously the valve covers, you've got the intake, and then you've got this PCV valve. So positive crankcase ventilation valve. If you've ever taken one apart and shook in it, you can hear, um, there's usually a little ball and spring inside, like a little check valve. And basically that allows any pressure from the crankcase to work its way back, uh-oh, into your intake manifold. So what happens? Now in a perfect world, if this was just air, nothing would happen. But what can happen is as you get oil blow by, it works its way into your engine and it can actually gum up your intake, the backsides of valves, um, it basically, over time, um, can make your engine run poorly, for lack of a better term. So just a second ago, I talked about direct injection. Now, this motor right here is port fuel injection. There are individual eight fuel injectors in the intake manifold in a fuel rail that inject fuel. Now, that mixture of fuel and the air coming through the throttle body mix going into the combustion chamber. Now, the good thing about this setup from like an oil blow-by standpoint is, as you know, fuel is kind of like a solvent and that will actually help to clean some of that mixture. But on a direct injected engine where you have fuel injectors at much higher pressures inside the cylinder heads, you don't have that sort of cleaning potential. So you probably have heard about um, Volkswagens, TDIs, Audis, having issues with gummed up valves. And a lot of that is from blow by, but I'm not gonna get into that because obviously I don't have an Audi or a VW or a direct injection motor, um, but it's just something to be aware of. Now on a carbureted vehicle, this has, we'll call it throttle body injections, right? This is a Holley Sniper. So instead of having eight individual injectors, you know, on a fuel rail, I can't, I'm not even gonna bend down there because you won't be able to see it. Um, basically eight in the intake manifold, this one has, well, this one actually has multiple injectors, but they're all in one spot and they're inside the Holly Sniper. So basically it's coming in mixing and then has to go to all eight locations uh, intake ports. So not quite as good, better direct injection is a step further, but it has its drawbacks. So let's say you want to fix this issue. You don't want to gum up your valves. What can you do? So one of the things you can do is get yourself a very cheap oil catch can. Now, these catch cans have, there's all different types. I've got this off of Amazon. It was rated well. You know, I don't love the fact that it says oil catch can on top, um, but it's pretty simple and I'll pull it apart and show you, you know, what it is. There's an in, there's an out. All this is, is pretty much, we'll call it, it's like a separator, okay? You get your oil mist coming in, the oil gets trapped, collects down here at the bottom, and then your clean air goes back out into your engine. 
Now, typically how this would work on this vehicle is you would mount this somewhere here in the engine bay and this would be your in and that is your out. If we look at this in a little bit more detail with it taken apart, all this is is just a, it's just a way to collect oil. So there's nothing special inside of here. Um, this is the $25 Chinese one. And as you can see, <laughs> they only painted about half of it on the inside. You get what you pay for. All this does is hold the oil, nothing special here. This is your dipstick, which goes through the top. And this allows you to figure out how much oil's in there and if you need to dump that oil out, okay? So that's all this is. This is really kind of the interesting part. Like I said, you've got your in and you've got your out. And all this is meant to be is just kind of like a little separator to help knock some of that oil down as it's coming in and go into the bottom of this. Now, fancier versions will have small micron filters on it, but again, you could spend 50, 100, 200, probably $300 on a really fancy one. I don't think you need to. This one was $25, give or take. Uh, from Amazon, I think this is all you need. Now you do run into the issue of how do you mount it? So um, this actually came with a little mounting bracket with two bolts and on an older vehicle like this truck, you've got tons of places to mount it, you know, on the firewall, fenders. But as we look over here on the Cobra, there's not as many spots um, to mount it. And especially these Cobras with the strut tower brace, it's, it actually takes up a lot of space. Um, so I was kind of scratching my head. Now, again, you could probably mount it maybe back here, but that's just plastic. I don't love that. Um, I don't really want to get rid of my strut tower brace and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So I came up with an idea. So if you watched my last video, you probably noticed um, I put in a pan hard bar and with that pan hard bar came these little spacers. Um, I love just saving little bits and pieces of metal because sometimes you find another use for them. So I saved one of the right. did was I grabbed some step bits here and I measured the OD of the strut tower brace, and I cut one of those smaller holes uh, to a larger hole so it would fit around the strut tower brace. Um, so I cut it, a larger hole, then I cut it in half, and then I'll show you how I plan to attach So basically, with this cut out larger to a perfect circle, it's about an inch, you can see here that I can attach it multiple places. Now I've got a welder, um, so it won't be too difficult for me to just grind some paint off and weld that in place. Now, as you remember on the other one, there was a hole on the back side, a larger hole. Um, so I just got my welder and I just filled that hole in. And then I went ahead and I drilled two holes to mount it. And the other thing I did was I grabbed a small little piece of metal because actually right here on the back side, you can see there's a little indentation. So I just measured that out, got a little piece of steel, tack welded it on there and that way it'll fit nice and snug in the back side of this i'll weld this to my strut tower brace paint everything black and it'll look great now the other reason i'm doing this is while that will remain fixed i can just undo these two allen bolts right here whenever i need to i'll leave myself enough extra hose that i can pull this whole thing out and then dump out the contents the more expensive ones will have drain valves in the bottom and if i had more room i could always just you know, put a fitting in here with a little drain valve, route that to the ground. That would be another idea. And maybe I'll do that in the future. Um, but for right now, I don't have a way to weld aluminum. So I'm gonna stick with this plan, which will allow me to remove this all together um, when I want to empty it. One of the main reasons that I decided to add the oil catch can in my situation is this car will spend a lot of time at high RPM. So at that high RPM, um, you've got less vacuum, everything's moving quicker. There's just a lot more chance for blow by. So um, I think if you were driving your normal car on the street, chances are you probably wouldn't see as much oil consumption um, that you would see in your catch can. But I think with this being a track car, it's a really good idea. I may even decide to install something similar for the transmission. If I still have issues with basically too much fluid or the fluid kind of in the transmission getting warm, expanding and coming out of the breather. Um, if I do do that, I could do something similar. I still got another one of those brackets so I could mount something on the other side of the engine. In that case, um, it wouldn't go in and out. It would just go in and just store there. So I would probably modify that a little bit so the catch can itself could breathe, but ultimately it's not going back into the engine or in that case into the transmission. So um, let's get this thing the rest of the way installed and then see how it works. I'm thinking it's gonna go just about like that. Um, that should give me enough room down there so nothing hits. Uh, you don't have a ton of room on these cars, like I said, but then I'll have access to the in and out and I'll leave myself some more hose 
um, just so there's no issues. If you're planning to go my route, uh, you will need a 10 millimeter socket or ratcheting wrench. There are three bolts on this side, three on the other, and then 13 millimeter in the back by the firewall, and this whole piece should just lift right off. Got her all installed. Um, I think it came out okay, not my best welds, but let's not focus on that. Um, got the lines routed here. I could shorten them if I wanted to, but this will give me a little bit of room. The only thing I will say is you will have to undo the nuts in the back because if you unthread this, it comes down and hits the clutch cable. It's tough because if you tilted it up higher, you might hit the, uh, the padding. Any lower, it's gonna hit stuff. So a little bit of a compromise, but I think all in all, um, you don't even really notice it's there unless you're looking for it, which is generally a good sign. So I think overall it's a win. Okay, guys, if you like that video, uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button. If you have any comments, um, leave me some comments. I'll be driving it. It's, it's supposed to rain and snow over the next, next few days, so maybe not right here in the future, but when I get it back on the track for sure, um, I will see how much, if any, oil we pick up and uh and report back thanks again always for watching have a good rest of your day